Hello YouTube and welcome to Ground Forks. In today's episode we will be showing off a Buran. Now a few weeks ago I have designed a space shuttle and some of the comments I got is they would people would like me to show off Buran. Now for those of you that don't, do not know Buran is actually a Soviet Russian reuse reusable space program that ran between 1974 and 1993. It is a basically a copy of US space shuttle program with some modifications and tweaks. Now you can see me launching off our Buran shuttle. Basically I try to stick true to the original look as much as possible. Now the Buran shutter or orbiter is very similar to the space shuttle with some differences. However, the rocket that it's riding on, it's very different. While the shuttle uses solid rocket boosters and a fuel tank, the Buran class shuttle is actually uh, a payload on top of a very powerful Energia rocket. Now, unlike the shuttle, uh, Energia has its own power. It has four side boosters and uh, the center stage, all of them powered by liquid fuel, uh, unlike the solid rocket boosters of the shuttle. Now, uh, also unlike the shuttle, Buran is sitting on top of this Energia rocket as a payload, meaning it's not providing any thrust during the ascent, which makes sense because unlike the space shuttle, which has three huge engines providing thrust during the ascent and sucking the fuel out of the ascent stage, Buran doesn't have the three large engines, but it only has the OMS engines. And because of the design of the rocket, as you saw, uh, the boosting booster stages needed to be decoupled in pairs. Now, uh, we can see our Buran going up into the orbit on top of en the Energia rocket. We have detached the boosters and we are going for the orbit. Now, some facts uh, about the Buran program. It was originally started, uh, like we said, in 1974 by the Central Aerohydrodynamic Institute uh, and it ran for a course of years. The orbiter itself uh, was designed, uh, or not was designed, but it had a first and basically only orbital flight in uh, 1988. Uh, and the interesting fact about it that its orbital flight was completely unmanned, meaning it was remote controlled during the whole flight. Uh, the orbiter made two revolutions around the Earth, after which it has successfully landed on the Baikonur Cosmodrome um, in Russia. So, um, Buran program originally started as a militarized version because the Russian authorities were uh, thinking, wanted to have their own horse for the race when it comes to it, and uh, it was, uh, it was designed as a response to the US space shuttle project. It was large and most expensive in the history of Soviet space exploration. And uh, there were multiple test vehicles. Uh, one of them is, I believe, still today available in, I believe, somewhere in some museum in Germany. While the original or Buran orbiter that has... Uh, flown its two revolutions, was, has reached its uh, uncere unceremonious end in, I believe, 2003 or 2002, hold on, um, I believe, it in, in May 12, 2002, when the hangar housing the Buran orbiter collapsed during a huge storm in Kazakhstan. Now, um, the, let's talk a little bit about the test itself of the Buran. Uh, launching Buran was a very interesting and very challenging task because unlike the, its American counterpart, the shuttle orbiter, 
Uh, shuttle was assembled vertically in the vehicle assembly building at NASA, basically attaching it to the fuel tank and the boosters, and then it was rolled out for the launch. Unlike the shuttle, Buran was uh, strapped on top of the Energia rocket while being horizontal. And then it was rolled out and then uh, raised up to the launch position. So it was originally rolled out to the launch pad in October 23, 1988. However, its first launch attempt nine days after the rollout was scrubbed less than one minute prior to liftoff due to a computer fault. Now, with the problem fixed and the launch, new launch date set, the weather during the countdown thre- threatened another scrub. However, uh, it was pushed towards the launch and uh, it featured the debut of the Buran as we know it today. Uh, liftoff occurred around 6 a.m. and November 15, with the stack disappearing into the clouds just seconds after the launch. So, sadly, we, wouldn't, uh, we weren't able to witness uh, what was the decoupling procedures, etc. Uh, but the uncrewed Buran successfully launched on what was the shortest mission. It's, it was a short mission in space, entering the 251 by 263 kilometer orbit of the planet. Prior to doing the deorbit burn 140 minutes into the mission, it survived re entry and it was greeted by the MiG 25 chase plane during her return to the launch site, with touching down at around 260 kilometers an hour and 17 crosswind at the Jubilee runway. Uh, yeah. Now, the interesting part and impressive part that it was doing completely unmanned. So, and it was the only space plane orbiter that managed to do so during its time, because the shuttle was always piloted. Um, Now, as you know, I mean, it was uh, in 98 that it went, and 90s weren't particularly kind to the Soviet Russia, which which meant that basically... uh, the program, which was so expensive, had to be, or it was scrubbed in 1993 by the president, uh, Russian president at the time, Boris Yeltsin. Uh, the remaining vehicles uh, that uh, were set to fly into space are in various locations. Uh, the OK-1K2 Ptichka, or the Little Bird, was set to fly 91, and it's currently Uh, the property of Kazakhstan left to collect dust outside the MIK building at Baikonur Cosmodrome. The OK-2K1 Baikal was sent to fly as a crewed vehicle in 94, and the vehicle has been left in a car park in Moscow near Kimki Reservoir. She remained there until mid-2011, when she was barged to the MAX International Air Show, and she now resides in Ramenskoye. Uh, a number of uh, test vehicles and mocks up still exists, uh, but I believe there was only one real um, was only one real retrieval. Let me see if I can find the exact information about that. It has been uh, one of the orbiters have been retrieved in as far as I know, in the Germany. Yeah, uh, the, it was the OKGLI, OK the vehicle that was used for testing. It was the Soviet version of the shuttle Enterprise with the in-flight testing. It wasn't uh, orbit capable, but it was used for flying tests and gliding tests, etc. Now, that one, uh, unlike the most of the Buran program, she was salvaged salvaged and shipped to her retirement home at Technik Museum Speyer in Germany. So, yeah. So, that's uh, roughly a little bit about the ho- history of the Buran program and the orbiters themselves. Now, let's take a look a little bit in terms of our descent back to orbit with the Buran, our Buran orbiter. What I can tell you from the (coughs) get-go... Sorry. Sorry. Is that uh, the orbiter itself, since it doesn't have the big OMS pods, which are kind of heavy and push its center of mass a little bit backward, 
Uh, it actually flies very well, unlike the shuttle, which uh, I have experienced during the return, tur started to flip and basically turn its rear forward, despite the center of mass being behind, being ahead of center of lift. But um, the Buran Orbiter, since it didn't have that weight at the back, it exhibited a lot more, a lot better gliding capabilities. Now, unlike the Buran, we have launched our KSP Buran to be manned with two brave Carbonauts uh, on board. With that being said, now we are experiencing some atmospheric effects. I have decided to actually show you also the whole re-entry uh, for our Buran, simply due to the fact that um, um, the shuttle has its properties and there were some people asking for comments. So at this point I have deployed the flaps to their maximum extent. I have deployed also the spoiler on the wing and I have also deployed the big flap. Uh, we are trying to maintain a 10 degree pitch angle. When we were higher in the atmosphere we were holding I think 40 degree pitch angle and braking. So now when it comes to landing please note that I'm by no means good in terms of hitting the KSP runway and noting that uh, the orbiter itself has the gliding capabilities. Although better than the shuttle it's still a big flying brick. So I'll try to hit the KSC runway, but guys, no promises. I still have to work a lot in terms of my knowledge and understanding of re-entry when it comes to shuttle orbiters. Sorry about that. If I had maybe the uh, powered version of the Buran that had like the jet engines beside, maybe that one could be flown all the way until KSC. But with this one, I guess I'll just take what I can get. Now, the re-entry profile, which I found that works pretty decent with the shuttle and the Buran, uh, is actually 40 degrees pitch angle until you get to roughly, I don't know, 38 and uh, drop your speed to, I believe, 1.6 thousand meters per second. And now we are just trying to maintain a 10 degree angle and uh, glide. Basically, as you can see, my angle of attack is around 10 degrees. And what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do pretty hard, as you can see, I'm trying not to get my nose bone pointed too down, and I'm trying to avoid any sharp maneuvers. Because the moment you try to do that, the craft doesn't become too stable. Remember, it's not designed to be an aircraft, it's just designed to glide and land. So my vertical velocity is increasing and my nose is trying to pitch down so at first I was maintaining my attitude and I was trying to uh, decelerate to a decent amount but now then when we are trying to go a little bit to more towards subsonic speeds I still have to maintain my airspeed so I am pitching down but trying still not to get my vertical not to get my velocity indicator too too low down otherwise we mo might not be able to pull out from dive which would leave our carbonauts to become a nice um, nice green spot or fleck somewhere across of this desert which i'm trying my hardest to avoid from happening uh, note that I have uh, reduced my flaps because too much flaps was causing a lot of drag and it was uh, decreasing my velocity too much. Now I don't want this to be happening anymore because we are now at the gliding speed. So we want this craft more to be like an aircraft than it than basically a big air brake at the back. So. Yeah, I'm trying to now, as you can see, I'm slowly pitching up and trying to raise my uh, velocity indicator. So far I have been successful, and, but I'm also at the same time trying to maintain delicate balance between the speed and the, and the, the altitude and the heading. So 
pitching down to pick up a little bit of airspeed, then uh, pitching the nose up to make sure that our glide path is not too steep. I think, I will, like I said, I'm pretty sure I won't be landing at KSC because, well, I have no means of getting there. Uh, and I really don't like the hilly area that's in front of us, meaning uh, let's, let's turn some 40 degrees and I'm hoping to get a little bit flatter terrain. Might be a rough landing, but at least, guys, you, you get a chance to witness and see what's the re-entry procedure. Not in terms of hitting the runway, but in terms of maintaining uh, stability during the re-entry. So... Easing up on the stick, just gently. The ground is coming, it looks pretty hard. Um, yeah, so let's just see how we will fare in terms of that. Come on. Okay, 700 meters, trying to arrest our vertical velocity. Pitching up, pitching up, getting ready to deploy the chute as well. The moment our wheels touch the ground. And come on, come on. Easy, easy. Oops, there we go. Oh, I believe we lost something. Oh, crap, I've deployed the craft. And oh. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. This is Groundfork signing off.